Uh, now I'm going to introduce the class modules that we are going to take in the next uh, 13 classes. First of all, we are going to start with the question, why English? Of course, we start with the assumption that English has many strengths. It has already become a global language. So we are going to try to find a clue. So what makes possible for English to rise as a word common language? So the first module will be is it about is the number of the power. Is it because of the power of its speakers? So in this regard, we are going to take a history insight from the case of the Latin language and the Greek language. Of course, we are looking back to history. There are always rise and fall of the lingua franca. So as you know, the, the Greek used to be the once the lingua franca, but it eventually declined. It lost its power, its linguistic power. So we can see why, how it can rise and how, why it has fall. And in this, and also French language, it used to be the language, the, the global language of diplomacy and the polite norm. Then why the French uh, lost its power to England? So in this case, that we're going to build a connection between the power of language and the power of its speakers. So it would be interesting for us to uh, so share the stories about the power of British people. Then how it is the military power or it should be the economic power. So which is more important? Sometimes it could be political power. So how is the power related to the power of language? Power of a speaker is related to the power of language. This will be the first, uh, first module that we will um, handle. And the next one is the number. So how is it related to the number of the speakers? For example, so the number of the speakers should be uh, big enough to reach a critical mass, I would say. So for example, the Americans, that Americans, they happen to speak English as their mother tongue. So you may take for granted why American, so English is a matter of course for their mother tongue language. However, we are going to take a history, uh, history, history story. Then it will have, a, we will find a different story from that. English was a choice of matter of choice. They English, uh, maybe French could have been their mother language, and Spanish could be the mother language for Americans, and Dutch could be the mother language of the American. So why then they chose to uh, the English for the American people? So these are the question about the number. So we have a lot, we have a couple of stories that support the view that number is important factor that decide the power of language. And the next module is, is literature. So I would say that a real source of power of the language comes from its written language. So if they, because the written language can keep a record of a history and document. This was the case of old English and old Anglo-Saxon that we are talking about why Anglo and why the English Anglo-Saxon people's language could survive and, and prosper. So this is the power of written language and the prime example of written language is literature, English literature. So we are going to look at the, how the bear of the old time, English, old time poetry and also we'll be uh, looking at the 14th century Geoffrey Chaucer, Chaucer and also we'll be looking at the Shakespeare and the Mark Twain. So this is literature. In this regard, then we have another Bible trait. So um, English usually is said to be how long English history is. They usually say it will be English, the history of English is about 1,500 year old history. 
Then we have another trail, which is much longer and which gives a lot more insight on the relationship between the power of language and its um, power of language and its uh, power and this is global society. That is the Bible trail. So we are going to take the Bible trail. And also it has something to do with the Christianity, only Christianity uh, in English. And, uh, and also it has, a, it has a lot of stories that can give us uh, insight about the relationship between the global society and the language. And these are the major, and also we have uh, Lexical stock. So lexical stock. What makes English so powerful? One of the reasons is lexical stock. English is a result of its constant contact with, with, um, uh, with the different people and different culture. So we would say uh, the English uh, English have been imported is uh, um, words from Latin and French language, and also imported from Viking and Viking people, and also English has imported from Native India when it spread to America, and also it has mingled. It has also a mixture. Uh, it has introduced a lot of words from Dutch and Spanish and French. So English is a result of all this is the contact with different people and different culture. And these are the first two thing that we are going to handle. And doing this, we are going to take a two trail, two trail. So one trail is a local trail, trail of English, and the other is global trail. The other is a global trail of English. So the, what is the local trail? Local trail is, is a time, uh, it is a time about five, AD to about 1600. So English was local language for only for the British people. Then here, the global trade start about here, from here, the 1600 and to the uh, 1950s. So we are going to trace the local trade. So it is, and then it gives a lot of stories as we trace the local trail. So in the local trail, they were talking about the British people under, under the British people under the uh, Roman uh, sovereignty, Roman control. Then we'll be talking about the British people. They were troubled by the Viking invasion. There were Viking invasion in six, uh, eight centuries to 10th century. And also British people, they were under the rule of normal French people. So the, the French language was introduced into British society. And also there is, um, and this is a major highlight of a local trade of English. But now English, they expand and starts this global trade. It's about the first year of the Queen Elizabeth I. So she laid the foundation for Britain to become a British Empire. So uh, this start and this year. Then we are going to trace the two, uh, two trails. So after we are doing this, then we are moving to the next season. So this is why English, but the next one is why not? Why not Chinese? And why not Hindi? And why not Spanish? This will be the next topic. Why? So, okay, there is no doubt. English has a reason it's consolidated as in um, as uh, the global language. However, it will continue. What's the future of its English? It will continue to remain the dominant language in the world for the global society, or it will lose power to Chinese or Hindi or other countries. And it just English can follow the footstep of the Latin and the French and uh, Greek. They used to be peak. They used to be, they used to be dominant. The Latin used to be the dominant language for church and education, but it is no longer the language of uh, no longer of the grassroots people. So English is fated to follow their suit.
or English remain um, a strong power in the future? These are the major topics that we are going to discuss. So in this regard, then we are going to discuss then uh, how is there any, any turning point Is there any global? Is there any global turning points that can turn the table? So, in other words, is there any uh, the turning point that can reverse the position of English so that other language emerge and other language can replace English as the word and as the next word global language? Maybe the candidate would be Chinese language, as you know, the Chinese is now expanding its economic power. The China is the world's largest. Um, uh, largest surplus country and America, the USA is the worst largest deficit country. So this might be one example. Maybe some people say Chinese language may be uh, replaced English as the next global country. Anyway, this, this is a kind of uh, the topic that we are going to discuss. So in this regard, then we will move on to the global issues. Then what are the global issues that can change the linguistic picture? So that maybe in this regard, we'll be talking about demography. So demography is something dynamic, so we cannot expect. So the demography is the statistic study of the men's, the population, uh, uh, population trend and it's about the aging or it's about the fertility rate and it's about immigration and it's about the, the, how many people are living in city and these are the, all the pictures so dynamic demographic change there is some uh, some demographic changes that is occurring in global society and this could be the one of the global issues that can change the position of English and also we have also talking about the middle middle class consumption. As you know, there are more and more people living in city, so middle class consumption is one of the major factors that can determine the success and the failure of the global business. So the middle class, if there is a country who has the strongest middle class consumption power is their language is likely to be the dominant language. Anyway, we'll be talking about middle class and the global issues, and how about the economy? global economy. So the economy is out of balance and now that the emerging economy is growing rapidly, they challenge the dominant position of the United States and Europe. So these are the major issues that we are going to talk about the second, uh, the second part of our class. Then, then we'll move on to the third part of class, that is about the culture and the communication. Culture and communication. So how is it affect the way they we use English? So there is culture and communication are so close related that it, it is even said culture is communication. And where is the language is here? The language is here. Language. The language is a tool to describe the culture and also the, ling the culture, is, the language is a mental, uh, mental thought process. So let's focus on English. So I would say there is a very unique event. Here is a very Our textbook, David Arthur, Dave, uh, David Crystal, then he keeps talking, he stresses the concept of unique event. He means that unique event is occurring in recent case in the global society. So this is very unique, that has never happened in the human uh, history. So what is it about? We are going to talk about what is a unique event and how it will affect the English position as a dominant language. So for example, the, this concept is about three circles here. 
So we are going to talk about the three circles. This is about the spread of English around the world. So we will keep talking about the three circles. So why we are talking this one? Because this, this is closely related to this issue. Why? Because the way that we are speaking English should be different from the way the Americans are using English. For example, the way the Chinese are using English is different from the way the British people are using English. And also the African people are using English, they, they are English is different. Maybe there are many some linguistic reasons, however, more importantly, there are more cultural reasons. So we are going to talk about what is the culture and what is the cultural differences between native speakers, mother tongue speakers of English and the foreign, foreign speakers of English. We are going to talk about what's the cultural events, what is the culture. So in this regard, What are the cultural factors that can affect the use of English? So, for example, we can talk about the communication theory, that in the communication theory, there are three cultural dimensions that affect the way the people behave and think. That is the context or power in the time. So every, uh, many people in different culture have a different concept about the context and the power in time. So we are going to discuss what is the context and how different the people's conception about context and how the difference affect the use of English. So we are going to talk about how, what is the power, how different people regard, they, they regard the power. So what is the, what is the effect of their, this difference in people's perception about power affect the use, about the way they peop, the people are speaking English. So these are the issues that we are going to talk in communication. So we are going to, so we are going to have some, uh, we are going to, we are going to share some uh, speeches for that inspire. There are many speeches that inspires us, or it could be persuade us, or it can entertain us. So we are going to share some power of English language that some of the great speakers, for example, we can share the Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream. They will talk about why is it so powerful? Why is it so persuasive? Does it have something to do with its culture? So what is the culture that is, how different the culture is, American culture and British culture? So in this regard, one of the, one of the, American and British, they have a different way. They have a different way of um, using the English. So the Bernard Show once said that uh, America and the Britain, uh, the two nations, they are divided by common language. So we will see how different British English is from the American English. Then maybe if time permits, we will discuss for us. So. For Korean students, what would be more preferable? Uh, what should be more desirable for Korean students to study British English or the American English? Then we will have a discussion. We, we, we can have a discussion, a debate on the which English is better for our education, British or uh, American English. This could be uh, one topic. So in this regard, that the major topic, one of the major topic is intelligible. One, local identity. So, these are the one of the major issues that we are going to talk about. So, language has two functions. One is to make us intelligible to other speakers, and the other is we language we help us to maintain our local identity. And sometimes we will continue to talk about this one.
Is there any conflict between the two needs of English, uh, two needs of English? So which is more important? We are going to debate. So which is more important to make us ourselves understood when we are talking to American people that we need to speak English so that we can be intelligible to American speakers and British speakers. So they would say this is intelligibility bond. <laughs> they would say this is intelligibility bond uh, with the American speakers. But on the other hand, however, there's a local identity. We need to keep our local identity. Even if we are speaking English, we want to maintain our identity as a Korean. So is there any, we will be to desire sometimes a conflict. So they're, they're so different. So is there any third way that can, uh, as a compromise or a solution to serve this the conflicting uh, need for one is the need for intelligibility and the other is the need for the local identity. Maybe these are the key words. We will keep, continue to discuss about the key words, intelligibility, local, These three circles, when you are talking about global spread of English, and we will be also talking about, so what is the global turning point? So is there any other, and also we will be talking about linguistic depth. So linguistic arrogance. So we will be talking about the linguistic death. So, so we have some top stories about the Celtic. They, they once used original inhabitants of British people, British Ireland. Then they were very civilized people. Then why? They lost their language as a mainstream language. So why Celtic language has almost declined? Why the Celtic language lost its power to Old English? This, these are the more examples. So we are going to take a history view. There, we are not only talking about English, the fate of English. We are talking about the other, the former, the lingua franca, the Greek language, and the rise and the fall of other lingua franca like uh, Latin and Greek and the French and Spanish. So it's amazing that we can see when, if you are talking only about English, English itself is all the related to the global society. It's all related to global issues like the demography and economy. And English is also closely tied up with the cultural legacies that affect our daily life. And English also, also closely related to the cultural dimension and also it is English, we can talk about what is communication. English is the topic as a medium, as a, the unified medium of communication. So English also is tied to economic issue. English has all, we have some local issue of trade of English and global trade. So it's amazing that only English can bring us a whole picture to the global society. So this is what we are going to do in the following classes. So I wish, I hope that we all invited together. So I'd like to engage all of you. So to be a very lively topic. So this class is not only one May lecture. So just only maybe one third of the class, only one hour of class will be spent giving you mini lecture. And the other one, one third will be maybe time for you to talk to each other. Then you should, I'd like to share your thought. I'd like to think. I'd like to reflect on the issues. So you can, you can share your opinions with your classmates and you can come over here and present your opinions so that we can share our feedback. And this is the way, this is the process that we are going to do in the final class. So. I'd like you to enjoy this class so that we can join, so we can let's join.
this class of the history of English and cultural aspect of English, so the communication of English. So I wish you good luck with this class.